All right, this is the only slide you're gonna see from me today, and that's because for the talk I'd like to give you today, I'd like us to try to use our imaginations a little bit. Uh, the president spoke earlier about a moonshot. Today, I'd like to talk to you about a star shot. I'm a planetary scientist. I'm studying stars and planets in faraway solar systems, and maybe the only thing that they have in common is that they're very different from ours. So let's take the particular case of planetary orbits. Now, in our solar system, the planets hum along in pretty quiet and predictable orbits, and the reason for that is distance. Our nearest neighbors, Venus and Mars, are so far away from us that they, their orbits can't possibly disturb our own. But today I'd like to talk to you about a star system called Kepler-32, where that's most definitely not the case. So if my arm span is the distance between our sun and its nearest planet, Mercury, here's the distance between Kepler-32 and its closest planet. In fact, there are five planets jammed into this distance. So that's a lot of mass moving really close to a lot of other mass, and it creates an intensely tangled mathematical nightmare. Um, I could tell you that, but let's try to visualize that a little bit better. What would that look and feel like? Imagine if Mars were so close to Earth that we could watch it rise and set in our sky eight times a day. Now that mass would be a constant forcing function on the orbit of our moon, trying to kick it out of Earth orbit, even out of the solar system. Think of Mars in that case as being like that bully in middle school that's trying to kick you off the playground. That's pretty much what's happening at Kepler-32, except we have five playground bullies, and they're fighting each other for dominance. To make things even more high schoolish, um, we, the, the bullies have resonance. The, or, the planets have resonances between them, which are the bullies kind of working together, two or even three working to dominate the playground. So this creates essentially gravitational chaos. What I'm trying to do by modeling all of this is figure out if a moon can somehow exist in the midst of all this, and if so, under what circumstances? The reason that's important is because we're easily 50 to 100 years away from telescopes strong enough to actually look up there and tell us if there are moons. Now my research finds that yes, moons can exist even in such cramped systems. However, in doing so, I made a really interesting discovery. Moons can actually dynamically hop between planets. Imagine if we could trade our moon for Titan or Europa, just do a swap every couple of hundred years. <laughs> that's actually possible if you're the third rock from the Kepler-32 sun. <laughs> Thank you to those of you that got that reference. <laughs> The final thrust of my research is to figure out what is the maximum mass that one of these moons could be? That's gonna tell us what they look like long before we ever image them with telescopes. Are they small asteroidal moons like at Mars? Are they bigger moons like our own or just dust rings like at Saturn? That's what I'm working to figure out. So I'd like to leave you with this thought. The next time you look up in the sky, think to yourself, it's a cramped universe up there. We found that cramped systems like Kepler-32 are actually more common than our sparse solar system. So maybe, just maybe, figuring these systems out could give us a clue about why we are so special. Thank you. Uh -huh.